Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of Tabletop Simulator. My name is Kasanas. Guys, in this episode we're going to take a look at using custom cards and creating custom decks inside of Tabletop Simulator to create your own game. Alright, let's get started. Okay guys, here we are back inside of Tabletop Simulator and I'm just going to open up what I saved last week. Okay guys, here we are back inside of Tabletop Simulator and I'm just going to open up our progress files that we've had. So I'm going to go to Create, I'm going to go to my Single Player option, I'm going to find my Save and Load options, and I'm going to find where I saved and loaded. Now, the problem is I didn't teach you how to do this. <laughs> and that's my problem, that's my bad. I should have showed you how to save your files and I hope you guys figured it out. Otherwise, right now you're like, oh my god, I lost everything I've done. So, you haven't necessarily lost it all. Check for an autosave. If you have an autosave and nothing else available here, open up that autosave. Type me a mean comment and tell me how, you know, how disappointed you are uh, that I didn't teach you how to save. That's my fault, guys, and I'm sorry. So, if you did, however, save, then open up your save file, load it up, and it's going to bring us back right to where we were previously. Now, previously, we created our table, we created our board, we created our bag with our custom figurines in it, and we created a bunch of uh, tokens that we'd use to uh, mark our long grass areas that we'd searched in. Now, I'm going to show you this right now, just so you know exactly how it's done. This is how you save. I'm going to go to Games. It's going to pop up this window, and I have the Save Load option available. When I click Save Load, I have a Save Game button right here. And when I click it, it's going to say, okay, well, what do you want to save? And I can go ahead and type in a name here, and it's going to save that particular load in a particular location. Okay, I'm going to cancel this because I've already done it. Same thing if you want to right-click and delete, or sorry, click up here and delete something, you absolutely can. If you don't like one of your loads, you can go ahead and you can delete it entirely. All right, so... I have done so, I've got my game loaded, and I'm ready to add in our cards. I want to set, create a number of different custom decks today and a number of different custom cards. So let's take a look at exactly how we're going to go about doing that. Now, we've seen in other videos that if I simply go to Objects and I go to Components, I'm going to see the different components that are available here. And I've got myself a Cards button. If I click it, it's going to bring up a number of different cards. And I can easily add a standard deck. We've seen that in the past already, how easy it is to do that. But in this particular situation, I want to actually add a custom deck or custom cards. You can do it one of two ways. Now, the big problem is, unlike our other options where we simply added in, uh, where we simply added in a single token, this doesn't work exactly the same way. If we were doing a single card, it would. So if I wanted to add a custom card, I could simply go in here. I could add a URL uh, for my face and a back. Uh, if I was doing it, I could change the, the shape of the cards, a number of different shapes, and then I could import that particular card. It would give me a single card option. Now, if you have hundreds of cards or thousands of cards, you're building yourself some kind of game like magic or something like that you might have thousands and thousands of cards and doing each card like that would be very tedious so there is an option to create a custom deck and exactly the same way create my custom deck click on here and it's going to add my deck now when i do it again has the same options what kind of cards are these are they rectangle etc uh, it asks me what kind of face it has whether or not each of the cards whether it's a double-sided card and has a unique back so if you have information on each side of the card uh, what the back looks like, and width and height indicates how many cards are in the deck, uh, in the deck grid. We're going to talk about that in one second, and the exact number of cards that are in your deck, okay? The problem is that you can't just go in and click all of the individual JPEGs that you've, you've created for your, for your deck, right? It's asking for a single URL here and a single URL for the back. So there's got to be a tool that lets us create a grid of some type or something that we're going to be able to load into our custom deck. Now, unfortunately, it's not here. I don't know why it hasn't been integrated into Tabletop Simulator. It probably should be, uh, but it's not. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to use a custom or modding tool that's been created for us. Now, that custom tool is available in our modding area, so in our modding directory. 
you'll find it under your program files, Steam, Steam apps, Common, Tabletop Simulator, Modding, and there you will find, well, you'll find a bunch of different things. You'll find Deck Builder, Deck Templates, Dice Templates, uh, and each of these will let you do something. So it'll let you build a deck here. We'll take a look at this one. Deck Template allows you to, well, let's take a look. It gives you a number of files that let you create the grid that would be used to build a deck. Uh, dice template is exactly the same thing. It's going to allow you templates that are going to allow you to create particular dice. All right, if you have custom dice that you want to use, you do that right here. So I'm not going to do a special video on how to do custom dice. It will be done exactly the same way as we would do a, a deck template. Now, in this particular video, what I'd like to look at instead is the deck builder tool. So under Deck Builder, uh, we've got a number of different options, the old Java version. We're going to go right to this TTS Deck Editor, and I'm going to double-click to open it up. And it's going to run this super sexy program. Awesome. So we can see we've got ourselves a an option to open up an original deck. So these are the decks that I've recently created. And at the top, we have New Deck and Open Deck. So both of those are available to us. If I wanted to open an existing deck, I absolutely could. So I can go in here to open. It's going to launch the thing, and I can find one of my decks. So let's say I find First Evolution. All right, it's going to open up that deck. Now, you can see what it created here. It created a grid. And basically, this grid or this atlas is going to be available to the tabletop simulator to actually create your deck afterwards. It's going to create a single file. And we can see that I had, in this particular case, I had 36 cards, up to 36 cards available. Now... You really have to decide how many cards you're going to need and what you're going to need in order to create a particular deck. All right, so you're going to have to know that in advance. Let me just close this off again. Or let's just go to a file and go to new deck. Let's go to file new deck. Now, I have to decide the, the width and the height of this JPEG based on the number of cards I'm going to have. It's not how big your cards are. It's not my cards are 3x5 or anything like that. It is what is the dimensions of this, protect this particular array. Okay, you have to decide what that means. In, in my case, I had a need of at least 36 different cards. So I can make a width and height in here of, of, of appropriate size. Let's say I had a uh, 1, 2. Let's just mimic this. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can make this particular deck a six by six. And when I say, okay, it's going to start a brand new deck for me. All right, and the new deck is right here and fully available. Now, right now it's just blank and it doesn't give you any other instruction at all. What you're going to do is you're going to find, oops, you're gonna find the JPEGs that you want to include in that particular deck and you're going to drag them and you're going to drop them into place. So I'm just going to click here and I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom and I'm going to click my final Zubat and I'm going to drag these and I'm going to drop them into the deck creator. All right, let's give it a second. And then boom, there we go. We've got ourselves a number of cards. Now, the big problem with mine is the reason why it doesn't look the same as the last one is I had a number of EVs. So I have a number of different EV evolutions, and I included an EV card several times. If you want to do exactly the same thing, you can simply find that card. So let me drag this back down here. So it keeps getting stuck on the top of my screen. Uh, you can drag this back down here. You can find the card you want to add. Where's my EV? Right here. And you can simply drag it and drop it in place. And you can see that it automatically gets added. So I can add as many as I want. Now, there's something to take note of. If you have precisely 36 cards in your deck, you want to be careful. You actually have to create one additional row. The final location right here is what's called the secret card or what the secret card is going to look like. If you leave it blank, it'll be a question mark within the game. If you put something here inside of this last position, it's going to use that to show the uh, unturned or the cards that you can't see. Okay, so make sure that you leave this space either blank or you put something in there that you want to show as an unrevealed card. Once I've got this done, I can simply save this deck. So file, save deck, or save deck as. I can give it a name, and it's going to be a brand new deck. It's going to create an exact, or it's going to create the same thing that I showed you previously. It's going to create for you a JPEG that you can then open up and use within your particular program. If you've decided you want a front and a back side card, so if you've got a double-sided card, in my particular game, I have got a card which has, which has the evolution, the first evolution, or the, yeah, the first evolution of our Pokemon on one side, 
and the second evolution of the Pokemon on the other side. So as my as my uh, 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 let's say as my uh, Bulbasaur becomes a, a a Venusaur, then I want to be able to flip that particular card over, and that's how I show the evolution of our Pokemon. That means I'm gonna have to create two of these. I'm gonna have to create a front side and a back side for my particular deck. All you're gonna do is create a first evolution, and if I say, watch if I say file, and I open my deck, and I find my second evolution, there's my second evolution. As soon as it opens here, there we go. Here's my second evolution. You'll see that I've aligned these cards so that the each deck is appropriate. So star me is here and star you is here they align exactly i've got them in exactly the proper order if you don't have double-sided cards you don't have to worry about that at all if you do have double-sided cards make sure that your alignment is all equal okay awesome once you've done that and you've saved your cards you're ready to bring them into into tabletop simulator so let's close this off don't save anything i don't want to do it i don't need this anymore because i already showed you this let me drag it out of the way now, let's say I want to create myself a brand new deck in the game. Let's take a look at how we do that. Okay, so we've created ourselves our JPEG, the single JPEG that has all of our cards in it. Let's go back to objects, let's go back to components, and let's go to our cards. And we're gonna, gra we're gonna grab ourselves a custom deck and drag it on. All right, I don't need this anymore, so I can close it off. Inside of my custom deck, I'm gonna decide how these cards are shaped, like we looked at before. You can make them rectangle rounded, you can make them rectangle, you can make them any shape that you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you decide. In this case here, I'll just leave them rectangle for now. Now my front face, I have to decide which face I want upwards and which face I want downwards. When we bring these cards in, they will be face down in our game. So you have to really decide what you want. It doesn't matter for me if I chose, because these are double-sided cards, if I choose one face over the other. In this particular case, I'm gonna choose my face to be my secondary deck. So I'm gonna open this up, and I'm gonna look for my face. And it's not gonna be here, actually. Oh, maybe at the bottom. It's going to be at the very bottom. Here it is. My second evolution PNG. So it creates a PNG, not a JPEG. I lied to you. I'm gonna click on my second evolution uh, PNG, and I'm gonna say select. And Again, just like we did with everything else, if you want it to be available for multiplayer, you're going to slap it into the cloud. Otherwise, keep it local. In my case, I'm going to keep it local just because I'm not going to be using this again. Local. It's going to add it in. It's a unique back. These are double-sided cards. So I'm going to check off the unique backs. If you don't have that, then don't check it off. If you've got a single image for all of your cards, then do so. My back is going to be my first evolution. So let's find my first evolution first evolution PNG and selected. And again, I'm keeping mine local. There we go. The width and the height. This refers to the width and the height of your particular deck that you built, not the cards themselves, again, of the particular deck. In this case, I'm going to say it was six by six. Oops, six by six right there. The number of cards are the number of cards in this particular deck. In my case, I had 30, I hope I had 34. <laughs> I probably should have checked that. 34 is what I think I had. It was possibly 33. We're going to go with 34 and, and hope. All right. The back is hidden. Nope. Sideways. Nope. Import. And there we go. Boom. I got it right, I think. If not, there's going to be some, some cards that don't look right in here. Now, I built my deck. I can pick them up like any other deck. I can put them anywhere I want. I can make them larger so I can upscale my cards to make sure they're of an appropriate size there we go again i can flip the entire deck all right good it looks like i've got the right number in here i can draw off a single card i can flip that single card awesome it lines up there's my slow poke there's my slow bro super awesome put it back in let's flip the entire thing check out to make sure my star you worked all right let's flip it star me on the other side awesome i got it all lined up appropriately now, a couple things to take note of. If you're actually building this game or a game similar to this and you've got double-sided cards, I've already mentioned this, but let me just take some of these. Oops, I didn't make take the whole thing. Oops, I picked up the whole thing again. Just pick up one card, dude. There we go. Grab a couple more. And if I take these and I flip them, flip, all right, and I try and put these back on top, I now have my... Uh, my backs my front side facing up these ones are front side facing down if i try and mix these two decks 
forgot the whole thing. Flop it on top. And you can see they don't align. They don't automatically snap into place. All right. And if I pick up the deck, I'm only grabbing the ones that were that were face up. All right. If I try and shuffle these, I'm going to try and grab everything that's here. I can't even do it. All right. If I want to grab everything that's here, I have to highlight and grab. I can pick, oops, highlight and grab and then shake them. And you can see that the shuffling doesn't work very well. All right. They flop down. They're weird. So that's one of the big problems with double-sided cards. And keep that in mind if you are building a deck that has double-sided cards in it. Let me try and drag these off. Anyway, guys, that's how you're going to go ahead and create your particular deck. I'm going to delete that for now. All right, so that's what you're going to do. In my case, I need several different decks. In order for this to be able to work properly, I need a, a set of cards for my wild Pokemon, which has the first and second evolutions on them, double-sided cards. I have a set of cards that is my third evolution, so any of the Pokemon that have a third evolution, or in my, in my case, a final evolution, because I don't let them go further than that, a final evolution for this game, I'm going to have a deck of cards like that, and I'm going to have a number of different cards that are available for the players to represent the Pokeballs they've used to capture their wild Pokemon, okay? I'm going to build all those decks, and I'm going to slap them up here. I'll be right back. A short while later. Okay, guys, I have got my decks created. I have my wild Pokemon here, and I have my second to third evolution here in case you had Pokemon that can evolve into a third form. So, awesome. I've also got some Pokeballs down here. Now, right now, I've only got three cards inside of this particular Pokedeck, and I don't need that. I need more than three cards. In fact, I need uh, two Pokeballs, two Great Balls, and one Ultra Ball. I created a, a PNG through the deck builder that had these three. And what I'm going to do afterwards, I'm simply going to... Let's pile these up. All right, there we go. I'm simply going to right-click, and I'm going to duplicate these. So I can go down, I can say copy, and I can right-click, and I can say paste. Now, in this particular thing, I still want this Pokeball. I still want this Great Ball, but I have no need of this Ultra Ball. So I'm going to delete it. All right, I now have five cards in this particular deck. Great, let me just align these properly. So now I've got two Great Balls, two Pokies, and one Ultra Ball. Awesome. What I'm going to do now, I need one of these for each of my players. I'm just going to right-click all of them, right-click. I'm going to copy. I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to say Paste. And I'm going to create a second one. I'm going to paste another one, paste, and paste a fourth one for my fourth player. Awesome. Let's align these so that our players can grab them really easily. Make sure they're not hanging off the table like this. Grab this guy. Let's plop it down right here. I'm going to grab my tokens and put them on top of one set of cards. So now when my players come in the game, they can simply grab the entire set of cards and the appropriate tokens, and they are ready to play. So everything is lined up. I like the way it is, guys. Don't forget to save games save and upload go into whatever you want to call it in this particular case i'm going to call it something else it's auto saved here i'm going to call it something else so save games and i'm going to call it the same thing save and there it is all right guys it's now in slot nine i could delete the older one i don't need this anymore i'm never going back to it so i'm going to click on here i'm going to delete and i'm going to free up that particular slot okay here's my game saved and ready for our next video okay guys I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know down below with a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down is perfectly fine. Not everyone loves board games. I love board games. And as a game designer, I hope you love board games too. Board games allow you to test a lot of your ideas, a lot of your mechanics. You can paper prototype with these kind of board games. It's awesome. All right, there's no dependency other than, of course, Tabletop Simulator now. No dependency on things like technology to help you test your ideas and to help you build games. All right, everyone. If you enjoyed it, I'd love to hear from you down below. If you didn't, no, that's fine. <laughs> All right, guys. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below. And if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.